I love jigs, but I also love Texas rigs. And to be honest, there's a lot of times that we go out fishing and these two lures are really interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one you are throwing, you're probably going to get the same amount of bites and you're probably going to get the same bites. But there are a lot of times, in my opinion, that a jig can outperform a Texas rig. And today I wanna to talk about those. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. They are having huge sales all throughout December. They're having a 12 day of Christmas sales. So you can really get the best prices that you're going to get all year long on some of your favorite lures. So why not buy some now, stock up now, so that you have them going in for next year. You're gonna save some money and you're gonna have your stuff ready to go for next year. So click the link down below in the description for sportsmansoutfitters.com. I'm also gonna leave a few of my favorite lures that I love so you guys can purchase those as well down below. All right, now back to the video. There's a ton of guys out there who fish who have a ton of confidence in a Texas rig. And there's no reason why you shouldn't have a ton of confidence in a Texas rig because the, the lure simply catches fish and it comes through cover probably better than any other lure out there on the market. But there is definitely some situations in my mind where I really like to throw a jig and I will throw it over a Texas rig. So let's get into those situations right now. The first situation that I'm almost always going to throw a jig instead of a Texas rig is when there is a crawfish spawn happening in the lake that you are fishing. Now, whether you call them crayfish, crawdads, or crawfish, I think you know what I'm talking about. But the thing that you really don't see a lot of guys talking about on YouTube is the crawfish spawn. You hear a lot about a bluegill spawn and you hear a lot about a shad spawn, but something you don't really hear a lot about is about the crawfish spawn. That is when I really love to throw Throw a jig. I think it's going to get me a lot of bites and most importantly I think it's going to get me those bigger than average bites. So whether you fish tournaments or not, we all love to go out there and catch big fish. And during a crawfish spawn is when I love to throw a jig. So crawfish will actually spawn up to two times a year, typically in the spring and also in the fall. Now why I say up to is that they don't always spawn in the fall. Sometimes, especially in Northern states, when that weather really plummets and your water temperature plummets a lot, it actually doesn't give the crawfish enough enough time to actually spawn. So you may not always see a crawfish spawn in the fall, but definitely in the Southern states, you will have that fall crawfish spawn. Now, typically crayfish, crawdads, crawfish, they're gonna kind of become more active during the spring once that water temperature hits about 45 degrees. That's when they kind of come out of their wintertime hidey holes and they start to get active. Now, when that water temperature is kind of in that 50 to 55 degree range, somewhere in there is typically when you have a crawfish spawn. Now, the thing about a crawfish spawn is that it actually just exposes the crawdads, just like you do when you have a bluegill spawn. When you have a bluegill spawn, the bluegill are just out there in the open. They're easy meals for a bass. The bass don't have to worry about them really leaving their little circle. And the same thing is kind of similar for a crawfish. What you see a lot is male crawfish actually come out of their little crevices in the rocks and they will actually be up on top of rock, kind of out with their pinchers to show the females. Now, the thing is, is that when this ha happens, they're really exposing them themselves to bass. And during this time of the year, when that water temperature is kind of in that anywhere from 45 to 55, 60 degrees, both in the spring and in the fall, that is when I love to fish a jig because a jig mimics a crawfish extremely well and it's going to get big bites. Now, I'm not saying that a Texas rig is not gonna work in this situation, but what I am saying is that if I can go out and I can get five to 10 bites on a jig throughout the entire day versus five to 10 bites on a Texas rig during this period of time, those jig fish are typically going to be bigger than average. And that's why I throw a jig during the crawfish spawn. Now the second window of time that I really like to throw a jig versus a Texas rig is anytime I'm fishing around very aggressive bass. If you're fishing around aggressive bass, more than likely they'll probably eat just about anything. They're probably gonna eat your Texas rig just as good as they're gonna eat your jig. So you might be asking, well, why would you throw a jig 
and not the Texas rig. And this is the biggest reason right here. What I have seen is that I tend to lose less fish on a jig than I do on a Texas rig. Now, both of these lures, you have a pretty high landing rate, right? The fish that you hook, more than likely, you're going to put them in the boat. But over kind of like my lifetime of really just kind of examining when I'm fishing jigs versus Texas rigs, I feel like I have lost more fish actually on the Texas rig than I have the jig. Typically when I get a jig bite, he thumps it, he swims off, I jack him and I get him. I feel like I've lost very few fish on a jig ever. And part of that is actually because of the weed guard. If that hook kind of goes up into the fish's mouth, that weed guard kind of helps pin that hook and pin that lure so that it's not moving a tremendous amount in the fish. Now a Texas rig, most of the time when you set the hook on a Texas rig, you're also going to catch that fish but what i think happens sometimes with a texas rig is that say for instance you're fishing a big 10 inch worm and a fish eats that 10 inch worm and that plastic gets all balled up in that fish's mouth now when you go to set the hook i think there's times when you actually have to go through more than one piece of soft plastic to get that hook into the fish's mouth because that fish has kind of balled that soft plastic all up in its mouth. You might actually have to go through the soft plastic a couple of times. And therefore, I've been fishing a few times where I've actually missed a few fish on Texas rigs or I've lost a few fish on Texas rigs. And I think that's the reason. There's nothing you can do to fix this. It's just something that can happen with a Texas rig. So if the fish are very aggressive and they're hitting a jig and Texas rig the same, I think you're going to land more on the jig. And that is why I go with a jig instead of the Texas rig. The third time where I think a jig will outperform a Texas rig is any time I'm trying to skip a lure. Now, you can skip both a jig and a Texas rig very well. But if you give me a half ounce jig and you give me a half ounce Texas rig, maybe like a maybe like a half ounce Texas rig beaver, I'm going to be able to skip that jig further into a dock than I can the Texas rig. And most of the time, this is just because you have to use kind of a lot of momentum and force to skip that lure a long ways. And that jig kind of becomes like a boat, really. It, it hits the water and it just skips across. But that Texas rig, sometimes if the weight hits wrong, it'll literally just stop. Or even if it does skip in there, again, it doesn't seem to skip as far as a jig will. So I have seen it be a huge difference between getting a jig three foot into a dock or getting a jig 20 foot into a dock. And if you can get that jig way up in there where other people can't get their lures, you are going to catch more fish. So in those situations, that's why I believe a jig will outperform a Texas rig. Now the fourth time that a jig will outperform a Texas rig, and this is my opinion, is anytime you are fishing for big fish. I really, really believe that you catch bigger than average fish on a jig than you do a soft plastic Texas rig. A jig in the water is just bulky. That skirt will really flare up and it just gives a larger presence to that lure under the water. I have seen it with my own eyes and I know that there are times where a bass, if you show him a Texas rig crawl, he's gonna pass that bait up really because it's it's almost too small, right? Like a big bass may not even think to consider eating that little crawl that goes by him. Not all the time, but there are definitely times when I see this happen. But that same bass, if you flip that jig by and it comes down with its bulky presence, that big bass is literally gonna think to itself like, oh, this is my opportunity to eat a big bait fish that's gonna sustain me for the rest of the day. So bam, they'll eat that jig when they won't eat that soft plastic Texas rig. And I have seen that exact situation happen to me out on the water. I remember fishing a Bassmaster Open on Lake Wheeler and the guy that I was fishing with, I was the co-angler. The guy that I was fishing with, he was the boater. He was fishing a Texas rig. I was fishing a jig and I just had a lot of confidence with that jig. And I remember three times in this one day where he would flip next to a bush in with his Texas rig and not get a bite. I would flip to that exact same bush with my jig and I caught a fish. That fish just wanted a bulky presence. It wanted a bigger meal 
Just like sometimes we want a big meal, right? I'm not going to Thanksgiving to eat a couple of French fries, right? I'm gonna get as stuffed as possible and lay on the couch and watch football. This video is a little bit different because of some of the situations that I've seen and some of the theories that I have, but I actually kind of put this to the test in another video right here where I actually did a jig versus a Texas rig crawl in this video. And I literally wanted to see which one would catch the bigger bass. I plan to do more videos like this in the future. This is an older video, but if you guys wanna check that out, click that video right here. And don't forget to check out sportsmansoutfitters.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.